Arun Sampantabivat is a master of Thai cuisine and so much more. He's a poet, he's a writer, he's an artist. He is a Renaissance man and then some because he loves so many things in life. But it's his love of food that's made him famous. Beyond the flavor, beyond the taste, beyond the meticulous service, uh, the food is strikingly beautiful. Arun was headed for a career in academia, but thanks to bad campus food, he found his destiny. He just uh, stopped going to the cafeteria. He, he literally bought a crock pot and started cooking in his room. Here we go. He's come a long way since then. My imagination just led me. He's generally regarded as the best Thai chef in the world. Not a bad claim to fame for a chef who's also a Buddhist monk. After being a monk, you learn to share more, you learn to give more. The story of an arts-loving chef who elevated Thai cuisine and through the process nourished his soul. It's the busiest night of the week at Arun's, the world-famous Thai restaurant in Chicago. But in the kitchen, it's surprisingly calm. We work as a team, you can see. There's no shouting, no panic, and no confusion. The reason? Chef Arun Sampantavivat became a devout Buddhist several years okay, ago and now believes that a calm mind and a disciplined approach, even in a busy kitchen, can accomplish anything. Now I'm the master of myself, that I could orchestrate everything here is in my hand. If I control it correctly, if I produce correctly, then I would please everyone as that, that's the end of the means that I, I try to do. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderfully spicy. And dining at his restaurant, Arun's, is almost spiritual. He's taken Thai cuisine into the realm of fine dining with a 12-course fixed menu that has wowed even the toughest critics. We've had people from Thailand come, dignitaries and, and diplomats and others, that have said, we don't even have as refined Thai food in Bangkok as you have here with Arun's in Chicago. What makes his food special is Arun. The noodle wrap with the prawns here, that's a beautiful one. I mean, it's his commitment to taking his cuisine and his culture and really portraying it at its highest, most elevated level. Well, Arun is highly respected for the complexity of flavor found in his dishes, like musum and beef curry, three flavored striped bass, and basil chicken. I think this cuisine, it's quite complex, it's quite detailed, but at the same time with amazing flavor. Arun is an artist in every sense of the word. He paints, writes poetry, and composes music. And incredibly, he draws detailed sketches of his dishes before any preparation begins. And so he really constructs his dishes from an artist's perspective, but at the same time you know, brings his experience and his taste memories as a chef. Arun didn't even consider becoming a chef until he was almost 30. Now food is a way of life. The act of feeding people is very meaningful to me in a way that uh, it's very rewarding when you see that people are happy. Thank you. Arun Sampantavivat was born in 1947 in a small village in southern Thailand. His parents owned a rubber plantation. Their eight children had a middle-class upbringing. Arun, as the eldest, had certain privileges in the family. I was not particularly interested in food at all, although I had a privilege to sit by my grandfather to dine with him. Arun's grandfather was Chinese, his grandmother Thai. So he was exposed to two world cuisines at a young age. I was forced into paying attention to every word about the food. At time when I didn't pay attention, it would knock me on my head with the chopsticks. Arun was an extremely creative child. He often read poetry to his grandmother while she prepared their meals. And that's not all. I like the drawing, pictures, uh, painting, and uh, creating stories and uh, reading. Arun was also given preferential treatment when it came to education, and he excelled. At age 10, he went to boarding school in Bangkok. 
everything uh, around there in Bangkok is so, was so fascinating then. It was for me, it's a great sense of freedom. Although every semester I was allowed to go back home, which was nice because I missed my mother's cooking. Arun eventually earned a degree in literature from the University of Bangkok. He graduated at the top of his class and began traveling on academic scholarships. But I thought maybe I would be a writer. I would want to maybe uh, put down what I have learned. He first headed to Germany to study the language. Then he was off to Japan. And the sense of discipline he found in both cultures would make a lasting impression. All those years, it's not so much of an adventure, but basically devoted almost totally on studying. At age 30, he arrived in Chicago to pursue his PhD in political science. He liked the university, but hated the campus food. I think we'd gotten like hamburgers or something. He went to the condiments table, and he slapped out a little ketchup, a little mustard, and a little mayonnaise, and we went and sat down, and he tried dipping like the french fries in them, and just looked at me with this look of revulsion and said, your sauces are no good. I thought my life had been so blessed with all the great food and all of a sudden it was like having a institution's food. But you know, after not even a month, I couldn't stand that. He just uh, stopped going to the cafeteria. He, he literally bought a crock pot and started cooking in his room. Eventually, word spread that there was a foodie on campus. And soon, a group of friends approached Arun about investing in a Thai restaurant. I was not really tired of study, but I thought I could use a break. Arun took a chance. He invested his life savings, about $10,000, and signed on as the group's consultant. His one condition? That their restaurant had to be fine dining. I did not worry one bit about whether the market would be ready for the pricey Thai food because I believe for a small restaurant of six tables, come on, you know, a whole city of Chicago could support this. But high-end Thai cuisine was a risk. Arun's partners, who were going to run the restaurant, grew scared. They pulled out without warning. It was almost like days before the restaurant could be open, the door could be open. Um, they decided to say it was not, they're not gonna waste their time. I was kind of shocked. <laughs> the shy scholar from a small Thai village was about to take on the Chicago restaurant scene alone.